Welcome to Real Life Reviews and in this little video we're going to look at checking your bike chain. A little bit of the why and then a little bit of the how and in the how we're going to look at a little tool like this, hold it a bit close to the camera, uh, which is quite traditional and we're also going to look at this tool here which is the Park Tool CC2, which is a more modern one, which will actually give you a measurement rather than just a straightforward gauge. So, without much further ado, let's head to the desk. So the why is ultimately about saving us money and also efficiency. As you're probably aware, the chain itself has pins that join the links together and also rollers here. Now what happens over a period of time is little bits of grit get in between the rollers and the pins and they create a bit of wear. And that gives us the illusion that the chain can stretch a little. Now this one isn't stretching much at all, there's just the slightest movement, it's quite new. And that stretching and movement then has an effect when we come to think about our rear cassette in particular. Obviously it has an effect on the front chain rings but mainly the rear cassette. So here's a, a classic rear cassette. It's actually a, an Ultegra 1132 and it's not been used much at all and you can see pretty even wear inside between the teeth. In fact virtually all this cassette has done is an Everesting that I did about six weeks ago and it was bought purely for that as an 1132 so it's in very good condition. What happens when your chain interlinks with the teeth and onto this cog is it's pulling against that tooth there, the right hand tooth in the loop. And if you're getting extra movement you're getting more wear on that tooth. You're also getting the possibility to get a jump out of the tooth and something you can come across is jumping gears. If we look at this older cassette, it's actually a, a Durace uh, 1128 cassette, you might be able to see, as I turn it round, little differences in the angles on some of the teeth. And they're not consistent differences, but this has been quite well worn. It's actually had a catastrophic failure where a block of three teeth here that were riveted together, the rivets failed, um, and it's a well-worn cassette. Don't be worried about the, any grooving and cutting that you see actually in the teeth. That's all about smooth changing a gear and helping the chain to move up and down. So, ultimately, a worn chain will wear our sprockets. And the sprockets are significantly more expensive than the chain you're putting on. I know you can get some very expensive chains and you can get some fairly cheap sprockets. So. Why do we need to check our chain? Well, we're obviously getting a less efficient movement on the rear cassette, but also we're going to wear the rear cassette more with a chain that is, if I use the term stretched, I hope you know what I mean by that. It has more play in the chain. So what are we looking for when we're checking the chain and, and how are we doing it? Well, what we've got here is we've got a fixed gauge and what this fixed gauge will do this one will measure if we can get to see it it will measure 1% or on the other side it will measure 0.75% now our understanding of where has changed over the last 10 or 12 or even longer years and this used to be quite a common gauge now it's more common to get them at 0.5% and 0.75% and it does matter how wide your chain is and therefore also the sort of delicateness of it and how much play and movement you can get. So in short, and all these measurements will be in the description down below, in short, if you've got a 10, 11 or 12 speed, some manufacturers will link 10 speed the other way, I tend to play safe, a 10, 11 or 12 speed should be changed when you get 0.5% play or more. A 5 to 9 speed, so 5 sprockets, 6, 7, 8 or 9 sprockets should really be changed at 0.75% and if you've got a single speed or a two sprocket bike that can be changed at 
1%. So I'm going to show you using this fixed one, but I'm going to show it to you on an 11 speed chain. So it's not the perfect tool, but to show you it being used uh, to give you the idea. Now, a quick FAQ, frequently asked question, how long should your chain last? Well, that depends on you as a rider and how you ride, and also the type of riding that you're doing. If you ride predominantly flat at a consistent cadence, not giving big efforts onto it, then your chain can last two, even 3,000 miles if it's well looked after, lubed, cleaned, lubed, cleaned. If you're a cross-country mountain bike rider, riding tough courses, constantly big uphill, quick accelerations, lots of movement, you're not gonna get probably half that wear in it. So it really does depend how you look after your chain and you can get another good reason for looking after your chain is to get more wear out of it. So I'm gonna show you how these tools work, but just before we move to the bikes, the basic gauge tool, well, that works by having a loop that goes over your rollers and if we just treat this tool as the roller and the loop goes over the roller and you're looking to drop the pin into it. Some of them have the loop on the side, so you put the loop into the roller and again drop it down. It's really simple to use and this one I will show you on the chain is actually just as simple to use. So looking at it from above, I've got my, my checker, I'm on the 0.75%. I'm going to put the, the grooved bit over a roller and then I'm just going to just let it with its own weight drop onto the chain. And there you can see, uh, I'll show you horizontal in a minute, it's not going into the chain at all. And there it is, pretty much from sideways on, just resting nicely on top. So now we'll come to the park tool gauge, uh, chain checker with a gauge on it. And this works because it's got a fixed pin at one end, and then it's got another pin on the other end that is fitted round a slight cam. So as I slide the black bit there, the wedge, then the length from this pin to that pin changes fractionally. It's very small. And if I turn it over then, and what you'll see then as we move it, is that the numbers on the dial here will appear in the window. And you'll be able to read in the window what the percentage is of the chain movement. Now the important bit here is Park Tool recommend that the fixed pin goes between two outer plates on your chain and the moving pin goes between two inner plates. So we need to make sure we know on the chain that we've got outer plates here and next to those are inner plates which are on the inside and then as we go along we've got outer plates again. So the chain goes outer, inner, outer, inner and the fixed part, the fixed pin, goes between two outer plates. So if I drop the fixed pin between two outer plates down there, make sure the gauge is on zero, and put the tool on the chain. Now the key here is not to force it at all. So I'm just going to adjust the camera a little bit so that we can get a bit more of a look there we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just press the gauge very fractionally. It's only just gone in. And in fact, I've got absolutely very little to no movement whatsoever. So that chain is in fantastic condition. Let's move across to the turbo chainer where we've got a chain that does need changing so we can have a look at that. The chain on the turbo chainer and I'm going to, I've got my gauge. My gauge is on 0.75%, you can see there. I'm just going to drop it onto the chain and it goes straight in. So that chain is at least 0.75% stretched for want of a better term. If I turn it over, it's gonna tell us that we're really, really naughty with this chain. If I put it on to 1%, well, it doesn't quite go in. It just goes in a little bit. 
This is where my gauge chain checker from Park Tool comes in really handy because I can be more accurate. I put the fixed pin between two outer plates. I drop the, make sure he's in. I drop the movable pin between two inners. It can't really go anywhere else. I press the gauge till it just makes contact. I don't force it. I'm then going to, I can see already in the window, in fact, cameras pick that up quite well. 0.75 is well in it. It's probably fractionally above 0.75. So that's given me a much more accurate reading. Not only is it giving me a more accurate reading, it will read my 0.5, my 0.75 and my 1%. I can use this gauge for whichever uh, sprocket I've got on the rear of my bike. There we are, checking your chain, a really simple job. I'll put in the description down below the tolerances, the, the, um, the number of uh, sprockets to the percentage on the chain for you. I'll also put down in the link or in the description down below a link to Wiggle. So if you want to buy this chain checker or one of the older style, the, the fixed ones, um, go through that link. There's often some great deals to be had and the channel gets just a teeny percentage of what you spend. You don't spend any more, but we get a little bit to help keep the channel going. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you want to visit our website where we've got other links to affiliates where you can buy useful tools like these, then there's a link just down there. If you haven't yet subscribed, well, click on the round photo down there. And for a couple of other how-to videos, well, up there we've got how to check and align your rear derailleur. And how about up there, a simple one, how to make sure your saddle is straight. Thanks for watching.